OFD has been around for about eight years now, and we are developing a global digital identity product. Um, when I first started UOT five years ago, there was only one product. Uh, we had a developer portal, which was in Slate. Um, so there was only one product. It was very simple. We had language snippets at the top um, and a one pager documentation on how to integrate the service. Since then, uh, we've evolved hugely. We now have six products. And this is why I think we're slightly different to everybody else. Um, because we offer a, a wide range of products, it's really difficult actually to collate that all together in one place and create an ecosystem. So our strategy at YoT for our developer documentation is to ensure a self-service integration from start to finish. So in terms of onboarding, um, so creating a business account with us, in terms of integrating the API or SDKs, and then completing the integration, QA, testing, and then going live. We want that all to be self-serve. So with the help of our UX team, our copywriters, um, product, like every team at Yoti has fed into this somehow, um, we've created our dev portal. So I'm gonna walk you through one of the products and explain the different ways that clients can integrate and how we try to facilitate that. So we have, as I said, we've got six products. We put right at the top what we can support. Um, we do also support bespoke integrations too. Um, and I think that's really important to highlight at the start because we can we go further than this. Um, so if I take you through one of the integrations and the rest of them will follow the exact same structure. So we're trying to be consistent throughout the whole developer documentation. So if I press integration guide. Now, there are three ways you can integrate this product. You can do it via a portal, which requires no code. You can use one of our SDKs or you can use our raw API directly. So we need to cater for different levels of engineers um, and developers, but also we get quite a few product managers and business land on our developer documentation. So we want them to understand the product completely. So we're trying to basically accommodate different audiences of different ranges and abilities. So at the start, we always provide some context on how to integrate. We also have um, the onboarding process. So what you need to do before you start, like a tick list. And then we go into a little bit of detail on a technical overview. So we always provide a diagram. If they speak a lot of volume, you can really understand what's going on by looking at it. So some people, they prefer illustrations, some people prefer text. Um, so we kind of try to accommodate both. We explain exactly what is going on when you do the integration. And we give an overview of the feature list. So as you go through, we always provide a demo. Um, so again, this is part of our developer portal. I won't show you the demo, but I'll just show you roughly what it looks like. So when you click launch demo, we give an end-to-end -end walkthrough of what the product will do. So you, as an integrator and as a developer, you can see your end product before you even start. And I think that's really powerful. It's completely free and anybody can use it. So each of our products have exactly the same structure. So they'll always have a demo at the start. And then we have a page where you can go for onboarding, which is separate. So there are different ways you can integrate. You can look at our examples. So what we do is we provide code snippets for each of the different SDKs that we provide. Now, as you can see, there's not a lot of information on here. So this is more for our advanced developers. You can jump straight here and see the exact amount of code that you need in order to integrate the product from start to finish. Um, again, I see this as effective because if you are scoping out how long it's going to take to integrate the product, you would just literally go to here and you could see an example. And this is what a basic session will look like and all of the code that's incorporated inside of that too. Uh, if you would like a step-by-step -step guide, then we also provide a walkthrough and this is very hand-holding. So, um, every single part of the quick start, we break down into smaller pieces and smaller chunks, and we go through a lower level of exactly what you need to do to integrate and all the details behind it. So every single line of a code should be explained. For example, if you look at creating a session, you can then go into preferences, and then we take sub parts of that, and we break it down into smaller pieces, and you'll be able to see all of the different parameters associated to each method.
Another thing that we provide, and this is for our more advanced developers, is our Swagger. So if you would like to go straight to and integrate with our API, we have a Swagger file. Now, again, this is more for the advanced developers. All this does is provide the endpoints and it gives you an overview and a description of what you can do with the payload. So this is a, a lot more advanced and it, it doesn't have as much information in it, but it, everything is broken down into subsections. So you can have a good understanding as to what's going on very easily. A lot of our developers like this um, forum as well. So we thought it was important to provide. Um, finally, we also provide a portal version. Now, as you know, this is a completely separate type of user. Um, a lot of businesses will use our portal because they don't have developers. Um, so within our portal guides, we actually, we actually have created a different ecosystem. So we have a lot of videos um, and we have a lot of screenshots and step-by-steps as to what you need to do in order to um, integrate the product from start to finish. So there still is an integration but it's a lot more simpler. Um, but to help the audience that we know will be integrating this service, we think that it's important to have videos and screenshots. So you'll see um, a heavy amount of screenshots and videos inside of this forum. So we use YouTube um, and we have had some accessibility um, checks, checks done on the developer documentation to ensure that we are supporting all audiences. Um, but we find that this, this, this way is much easier for our portal users. All of our products have a sandbox. So that would be here in our test um, section. It mimics exactly what's in production. Um, it's just a test environment, but we think this is really important to a lot of our clients have asked for it. So we have a small section on our sandbox. Um, and then we have a usability section. So this section actually is my, one of my favorites. Uh, so clients will integrate um, and developers will do the greatest job of integrating and then that would be it. You get product people come to our developer documentation and then they ask us like, what's the best way to integrate? How can we make our integration look good? Can you show examples? Um, so we have a user experience and a scenario example section. And this just shows what guidelines we think we should give to customers when they do their integration. So it's, it's very um, detailed um, and at this point, if any clients want to contact us um, and they want us to review their integration, we're more than happy to jump on a call to do that. So that's what we provide from an end-to-end -end experience. Um, so ideally, like I said, the strategy of our documentation is to be completely self-serve. We love clients contacting us, but obviously if we can avoid that, that would be our end goal. Um, if they do, we do provide a support service. So we try to put it right at the top and also it's at the bottom on our footer, just in case anybody does want to contact us. A couple of other features that we do have on our developer portal is that we have a stay updated page. Now this has, for each of our products, we have release notes. So if I take the same product that I was talking to you about before, which is identity verification, so if you're interested in the SDK releases, you would go here. We have our quick links, which is provided over here. Um, so again, this is where the developer documentation is, user experience, business help, demos, example projects, which I'll show you shortly. But largely, this page is for release notes. So every time we do a release, we put it here. We're working on um, putting a subscription so that you can sign up to it. And every time we update it, you can get a notification. We currently don't have that, but that will be something that we look to do shortly. Um, and this is across all of our products. And another way you can stay updated with our services is our status page. So this, we did this in the last year, and we found it highly effective. So we have a status page, which is part of our development portal as well. Um, and if you click global, you can see, again, all of our products. You can also subscribe to updates, and those updates will um, be for specific products, so you don't receive for everything if anything goes down. Um, you'll receive a notification when, if anything goes down um, or if there's a planned downtime. Um, and every 15 minutes, you'll receive a update until it's resolved. And then last but not least, um, I want to also show you our GitHub. So 
as I've shown you, we have our identity verification product. And there were different ways you could integrate, so the portal, SDKs, or API. And as I showed you, we have examples of that. Now, if you would like a working example project, we do also provide GitHub pages. This is our example projects. So if you were integrating in, for example, Java, you would click here. You could download um, and see live code of a Java project. Um, so you could get it working locally. And then all you need to do is swap API keys, and then you have a working project yourself. So again, like, we like to provide different types of ways which you can see the integration working as quickly as possible in order for you to integrate very easily. So our developer documentation has been um, iterated hugely from when we first started five years ago. As I, as I said, we had one product um, and barely any information on it. And we have evolved into this dev portal with different means and different ways of how you can integrate. Um, so our main goal is to keep it completely self-service and hope that our customers have the best user experience from start to finish when they use our developer documentation. And we hope you think so too. Hi. Hi. Can everyone hear me? We can hear you. At least I can hear you. So I assume others also can. Great. Sorry, you've had to listen to my voice so much. So much. You were so <laughs> Nice surprise. Thank you for the presentation. And um, so I wrote up some questions that I want to ask myself, um, but um, I added one more. Um, this is sorry, how do Laura, you... Sorry, we ha also, I also have two of my colleagues that were joining. Mm -hmm. Are they? Oh, they're okay. Coming through. There's Lou. Hello. And then Jason as well. Can you hear me as well? We can hear you. Welcome, Luke. And welcome, Jason. Hello. Perfect. We've got the team. So, um, how um, do you ensure that everything looks so coherent um, when you have six definitely different products? What do each element, what do the docs go through from we want to write about this to published and who is involved in that? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, so it's actually one of our biggest challenges. Um, each of the products are constantly evolving, changing, um, and becoming better and better. So we are constantly updating our document, our videos, screenshots, and everything. Um, our process to do this um, is involves multiple teams. So our product team will come to us with a feature release or some form of change request that they're going to complete. We'll be aware of that. Um, we, as we're technical writers as well, so we will draft together the documentation. It will get reviewed. Um, multiple people will be involved in that. So we'll have our design team to make sure that we're on brand. Um, we will get everything copy reviewed. Um, the product team will approve it. And we will also have our QA have a look at it and just make sure that everything's working correctly. Um, so there's multiple teams involved in um, before we go live with anything and we publish anything. Um, and when it's a small feature, we kind of do it ourselves within the integrations team. Um, and if it's a bit of copy change, then that happens ourselves as well, um, although everything does get reviewed. Um, but if it's a big feature or a new product, we have a, a huge life cycle, which we go through with multiple teams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And well, well, I think it's very well, Jason and Luke involved in there. So I'm asking because I was mostly uh, talking with uh, Kieran when we were uh, recording this demo. Yeah. So I'm wondering, uh, Jason and Luke, what are your parts uh, in the developer model? What is mm -hmm. you, your responsibility? So, so, so Kieran really is the, the architect for, uh, for how all of our documentation and Jason and I really support uh, Kieran in, 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 in writing that when the features come out. Uh, understanding understanding the feature to start with, understanding some of the sort of technical uh, aspects behind it, uh, and and supporting Kieran by writing some of the case snippets. Um, but we're also both uh, client facing, so we're, we've got that feedback from the clients who may be struggling with a certain feature or um, maybe maybe don't quite understand something. So that sort of prompts us to go back and maybe explain something a bit in a, in a different way, or just sort of change away, or provide more examples. So it just sort of we're help we're, we're there to help with the to sort of feedback loop of client, client input and um, and other teams inputting from, from around the from around the business. 
one point I just wanted to add as well was we do uh, go through this multiple kind of team feedback cycle for our documentation. Um, so we're not just writing for developers. Uh, we want to make sure that everyone can understand it. Um, and where we do that quite well is because we've got multiple teams within our company. We've got design, product, uh, engineering. We can do those full reviews, go through the full process, make sure that everyone's given their sign off um, before we push everything live. Uh, but we think it's quite important that documentation should speak to everyone. Mm -hmm. And the UX team as a part of that, how much creative input did you get from the UX team on the dark portal navigation and layout? Loads, actually, um, we start with our UX team. Um, so before we do anything, um, I'll architecture it out um, in Word, basically, and our UX team will come along and they will make sure that everything is readable and that our developer documentation tells a story. Um, so they'll make sure everything is clear and concise and has good accessibility. Um, they feed into all of our diagrams, um, how we talk about the product. Um, and we have portals within our portal as well. Mm -hmm. um, so they'll also um, be a dedicated UX resource working on the, those portals as well. Mm -hmm. So we get we get a lot of UX support. Um, if there's a new feature or um, something new that we need to add to the portal when we're not sure about where to place it, um, we ask for their advice as well. They're, they're great, actually. Um, they completely like spruced up our de developer documentations recently. Mm -hmm. um, and we found that it's made such a huge difference, just understanding the user journey and making sure that it's clear. And worth adding that um, they, they provide us with a, a design framework to use. So uh, we've got some common components throughout the whole documentation that we can, we can use when new products or new features are introduced. So we're not having to redo work every single time. Mm -hmm. And then the screenshots. How do you make sure that the screenshots are always up to date? This is a, the question. Every time somebody <laughs> says screenshots, this is the question. How do you do it's that? It's the bane of my life because it changes <laughs> so much. Um, but each feature that gets released will come to us. Um, and in order for us to document it, we need to understand it. So the three of us will spend some time um, understanding it. And then we will uh, look at all of our developer documentation where there are screenshots and update it as we go along. Um, it's, it's difficult, but I feel like it's a very effective way um, to showcase how something works. Uh, so we, although it's time consuming, I think it's definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. Who is the one who gives you the feedback on, yes, I can integrate this without an engineer? How do you do that? Because the more you know, the less you can. Yeah accurately judge when yeah, it is good question. low code uh so our anybody can sign up with yot and anybody can onboard with yot um you have to create a business account uh which you can then generate some api keys so we do offer a support service whereby you can email us if you get stuck um but we have multiple customers sign on and at every hour and if they haven't contacted us at all and we can start to see traffic coming through and usage um, then we know that they're completely integrated without our help. And that's actually our team's main goal to ensure that we continue that trajectory and that people are able to integrate without contacting us. Of course, we don't mind if they do, um, but the goal is to, to ensure that everybody has the capability to integrate without the need to contact us. Mm -hmm. There were questions about um, whether you could give an example of a store within a store and did you use an agency to get your technical writing correct? Uh, so I'll take the bottom one. Um, no, we don't. We don't use an agency. Everything we do is in house. Um, so we use a CMS provider, and then our CSS, our um, documents, um, the writing, and everything is done in house. Um, and then, can you give an example of store within store? I'm not too sure what so, that means. Is that portal within portal? That came up when you were mentioned that there is a portal within a portal. Yes. Ah, okay. Um, so for example, we call our developer documentation a portal and an ecosystem because it's, it's got so much information inside of it. Um, in order to integrate up some of our products, we do provide a portal version of the product. So there are four different portals 
um, which we provide one's an onboarding, one's an identity verification portal, one's an age portal, and one we call the hub. So, oh, and the health portal as well. So within our portal, we have um, another portal, which you can then log into, sign up, and um, integrate the product. So our no-code platforms. Uh, yes, our no-code platforms. Mm -hmm. And a last question, um, how long has it taken for the documentation to mature, especially content written at different levels for each product? Oof, tough one. Um, we have, it, it evolved, it's been evolving over years, to be honest. Um, our company is moving so fast um, and we're introducing new products all the time. So I can't really, give a timeline on how it's evolved. It's just, we continue to evolve it as best we can. Um, and who knows, by next year, we may have a version seven. Um, mm -hmm. It all depends on the direction of the company, our marketing team, how we want to sell our products. Um, so as that changes, we change with them. Uh, so it's taken a while to get us where we are, but I feel like we're, we're peaking. I feel like we've done really well to get to get here now. Um, I'm very proud of what we've achieved. Congratulations. Thank you. And thank you very much.